When I think of that phrase, building on blessings, one of the reasons I like it is because if you ask, what are we building on, and we speak of blessings, and what are we building, the answer to those questions lead us right to the heart of the matter. We're building up the body of Christ, and we build on some rock-solid, stupendous blessings of God. And I'd like to share that these blessings we're going to share in seven words. Each word will be unpacked in each successive week. Um, today it's blueprint. Next Sunday it's the word foundation. Then wiring. Then cross. Then window. Then brick. Then door. And as we unpack each one of these words of blessing, they will all relate to the appeal, but you'll find that they relate to our Christian walk, to the ministry of this congregation, because they relate to all of the things that motivate us most deeply. So let me say a few words about blueprint. As you know, blueprints show design, specs, they communicate the purpose of the building. And I'm not thinking so much right now of a physical building, although that's what we've been through. But I'm, I'm thinking about what about the greatest blueprint of all? God's blueprint for the creation. Does the creation have a purpose? Do our lives have a meaning? First sentence of our creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. First sentence of the Bible, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Here's the point. People of faith answer the question, is there a purpose to this universe? with the answer, yes. Who defines the purpose? God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. We believe that. Not everybody does. Many in our world will say that the universe was created by a random act of nature. There is no blueprint other than what unfolds in front of us. And so when we ask, do our lives have a purpose? The answer is, not as far as the universe is concerned, but if you want to make one up, that's good. But as people of faith, we don't give that answer because we can't. We don't claim to understand the secrets of the universe. The universe has grand mystery. But we believe that we build on the conviction that God has a purpose in creation and has a purpose for each one of our lives and that this purpose will be worked through us by faith in Jesus Christ and in a willingness to obey God's will. Did you notice that Pastor Les Talk said this very thing in that video? When they were dedicating in the groundbreaking, he said, this is not finally about Trinity. This is finally about God. We build because of God. Pastor Lestock linked our project to the greatest design of all, saying, we have a purpose in God's universe. This is about God, and that God has shared enough with us so that we know how we live, who we believe in, But we walk primarily by faith, don't we? Now I'd like to leave the whole universe and its mystery for a second. 
and talk about us. Trinity Lutheran Church. I thought it was kind of interesting to see that video and see fast movement of the building of this church. And anybody that's been through this and was heavily involved, it's been quite a journey, hasn't it? From basically a design to this incredibly beautiful structure, which in some ways can almost symbolize for us what we do in our lives of faith. We, we build. We build on blessings, but sometimes it's quite a journey. And, and I think we're very grateful for the tremendous amount of dedication and the hard work, and in some cases, the very heavy burdens of this hike. Where are we in this journey? I'd like to um, tell you a story. When I was about 13, I got to take my first three-day overnight hike. It was a long hike deep into the Cascade Mountains of the Washington Wilderness. It was mostly with college-age kids, so I was kind of honored to go with them. And as we trudged up the mountain trails on what was a long hike with the backpack, of course, it began to rain and rain. You know how the rain feels when you're up at high altitudes. I got a tad chilled and ever more tired as it seemed like this place we were going to where I'd never been was just never going to get there. And I began to wonder, where are we going to sleep? We don't have tents. It's so wet out. We just have tarps. And as I began to trudge up at that point, wet and soaked, I began to think back to the cabin that I had been staying in and the dinner bell that would invite us into a nice, warm dining room with good, hot food, the possibility of taking a sauna and a nice, warm bed, and to be honest, I began to wish I hadn't come. When we finally got up to that mountain lake, we found a little log cabin, an old trapper's cabin, and about 15 of us packed into that cabin and all found a place to sleep along with the mice. And we heated ourselves to a wood stove, had something to eat, and when we woke up the next morning, learning to put the little covers on our head as the mice ran over, there was this stunningly beautiful lake with the, the sun shining and the mountain flowers just popping out in a riot of color. Nearby was a mountain pass with one of the most beautiful sights I've ever seen. As I look back on that journey, I think it was one of the most exhilarating adventures that I had ever taken to that point. And I learned something too. Great journeys in pursuit of great things are rarely without times of testing when one has to take a gut check or one really appreciates an encouraging word. And maybe while one is doing it, there are times when you wonder if it was all worth it until you get there. Now, as your interim pastor, I don't know if any of you have felt this way uh, on the journey over the last couple of years because there's been all kinds of change, lots of work, but I've sometimes gotten little whiffs of this realization like the other side of the coin where you're saying, wow, this building project's been a lot of work and we still have five million dollar mortgage to pay off. I really miss Pastor John, I know that he was expecting to leave, but I wasn't expecting him to leave, and things just don't seem the same without him leading the services and preaching. I wonder, what is this uneasy and unsettled feeling I sometimes have that we just don't quite know exactly who we are right now? We're 
we're kind of in this middle passage between here and there. Have any of you ever felt like that? As an interim pastor, I want to tell you that whether you have felt personal grief at his leaving, remember, he was here for 25 years. There is such a thing as corporate grief. And in a congregation like this, with his tenure, that can last for up to two years, where you'll feel like something's missing. And as you know, grief is the gift that keeps on giving. It's also true that no community of faith or institution always has clarity about what it needs to be about. It's not like you can just figure it out and then put everything on cruise control. You go through periods where you have to renew, reinvent, and that period of time oftentimes can feel like chaos. That's kind of what an interim is all about. You're casting about a bit, and that's okay. Chaos is not all bad because it's chaos. It's realizing that we've got to change, but we're not quite sure exactly how that some of the great things come. We don't get to stand on the shoulders of blessing and say, look at all we've been given, now let's just put cruise, push cruise control. No, it's important for us to realize that from time to time, every faith community comes to crossroads. And Trinity is at a crossroad because you took a great big leap of faith to do this project. And the new has not yet completely become clear. And so you're at a crossroads because you realize that something is needed. This is probably why Scripture so often says, wait on the Lord. Persevere. Trust. The time will come. The vision will become clear. But for now, it sometimes takes the character to keep going on with the hike and to anticipate completing it. I know that my wife Norma Jean and I have talked about this and it's hard for me to stand up here as an interim pastor and say, I want you all to think about how you're going to be part of this crossroads where it's very important that we pay down the mortgage now so we don't compromise the ministry that we need to fund, which was the whole point of building the building in the first place. And so we decided that even though early 2014 we may be gone, I hope so from the standpoint of getting your new next lead pastor. We want to participate in a pledge that we'll probably be paying off long after we've gone. Why? Because this is important stuff. We need strong congregations in the communities where our kids move into. And we're about building on the shoulders of God's blessings for the purposes of the universe that we cannot see clearly, but we trust will be worked out through our faithfulness to God's promises. So that's why we look at this big blessing that God has a design for the universe and a purpose for our lives, and we trust, we trust, that that purpose will be worked out through us as we trust and obey. Our journey together in building on blessings is not going to finally come down to our material capacity. We have that. What will matter most will be our degree of trust in God to believe that important work is yet to be done and in the words that you also heard in the video, Trinity's best days are yet to come. Our hearts need to be open to this leading. You and I can't make it happen, 
but the creator of the universe working through us can. Amen.